Hey all, it's Ed from Experimental Airlines. I wanted to turn you on to a new airplane design idea that I was working on the last week. I was feeling a little bad about uh, opening up the door to the Noob Tube, which is not truly a beginner flying airplane, even though it's very, very easy to build using this foam board technique. So I wanted to build a plane that was really, truly a beginner airplane to fly, and I came up with this one, and I'm calling the Axon. It's made out of the exact same fuselage tube, modular tail, and arm and wing airfoil technique as the Noob Tube, but has a few diff key differences. It has uh, two wing sections, and I've elected to make this one a uh, 55 inch wingspan total. The modular tail is the same, you've actually seen this very one in previous videos, and I just swept these mostly for looks, also for a little bit of strength as it's got a wider base of attachment and a little narrower at the top. It uses the same two inch fuselage diameter, this is a 30 inch section, which comprises the main fuselage section here. And then out of a second one of these, you'll manufacture three of these, which are two inch diameter, six inches along the top, 12 inches along the bottom. And one of these is the upper fuselage, when the wing mount, and another one is the nose section. And you'll end up with three of these, so you'll have a spare nose section in case of a crash. You can just remove this section and replace it with the spare. The Axon uses a similar layout as the Bixler and the Hawk Sky and the Easy Star with the high wing, the mid mounted pusher motor, and standard tail. And I've, in this instance, made the wingspan the same as most of those in that genre. That's 55 inches. And I made the length a little bit longer for stability and also because that's just the way the 30 plus 12 inches ended up for this fuselage. I did need to add a little nose weight, but you could compensate by adding a little bit of FPV gear up front, or you could make the tail a little bit shorter if you wanted to, sacrificing a little stability. This is uh, two sections of arm and wing. Originally each was 30 inches long. In fact, this was the original piece drone wing that I've just cut a couple of inches off at each end. It does have a single carbon arrow spar, which sits right here. A quarter inch or 3 16 dowel would work just fine for that. Though I've made this wingspan 55 inches, you could easily leave the two 30 inch sections for a 60 inch wingspan. Or if you wanted a little speedster, you could make two 20 inch sections for a 40 inch wingspan, which would glide less well, but go faster. The wing is held on with rubber bands and chopsticks, which you can also get from the Dollar Tree, of course. And the upper and lower fuselage halves I've held on with a piece of uh, two-sided duct tape just for placement here. And then two more strips of duct tape here to hold it on. Seems kind of cheesy, but it's really effective, very strong, and easily removable if I need to replace any of these parts. This is a 2200 kV motor from RC Timer, but there are many different brands of this. It's about a 200 to 250 watt motor range I would recommend. It's mounted with a five degree down thrust, which is crucial for this mid pusher motor mounting uh, for stability so that it doesn't aggressively pitch downward when you throttle up. This is a six by four prop, so six inch diameter mounted at this location. And that down thrust angle gives about a half an inch of clearance below. And that of course is important too. Having this upper and lower fuselage tubes very accessible should allow you to put whatever sort of light FPV gear or gum stick cameras or any kind of other stuff and put it up here to avoid smashing anything. If you crash the nose here, you've got a good six inches of cushion. In the head-on view, you'll see that it's got a nice little pass-through for the air here so that the prop arc is not quite as disturbed as if this pedestal had been solid as it is with many of the planes in this genre. So the prop actually gets a little bite of air down here as well as up and around the wings. It's also a nice place to put your speed control and I've put my receiver right here. Although another good use might be to put a simple FPV camera up here in a protected fashion so that if in a crash this would remain pretty well protected. I'm using a 2200 milliamp hour battery placed right at the front 
that plus one more ounce of lead in the front was a perfect balance for this. For this plane, I did actually sweep my horizontal and vertical stabilizers, mostly just for looks, and I just put some duct tape on there. It's not the lightest uh, option. There are many other ways to finish these edges. I did want it to be a little bit more durable in the front because I know that this is constantly being exposed to direct prop wash, and I wanted to be absolutely certain there was no paper exposure there that could potentially peel off due to that high velocity air coming right past there. I've used the same gift card control horn technique for the rear control surfaces as well as for the ailerons. So my advice would be if you're new to building and flying these foam board planes is to build a noob tube first, put it on the shelf, get those techniques under your belt, then build one of these and fly it and learn how to fly really well and bash up the nose a few times and replace it and then when you get good, do your second plane, break out the noob tube and enjoy that. As always, I have no plans for this plane, but it's very easy to follow the videos to build the arm and wing in two sections, the foam board fuselage tube, two sections, and the modular tail and take it from there. I named it the axon because the axon is the part of the nerve cell that conducts the nerve signal from one nerve cell to the next and that reminded me of the FPV action of the uh, camera and the transmitter sending the signal down to the pilot. Plus it's kind of a catchy name.